What can go wrong with a passive investment? Are passive investments always profitable? Can you lose money, doc? Hey, on this channel, we talk about, hey, passive investing is the best way for dentists to achieve financial freedom by building income that can cover and exceed their income that they depend on as a dentist. And we talk about it as in a vacuum, like, hey, look, you invest, you get this cash flow, you make money and you get rich and you just keep gotta keep doing it. But is that really the case? What can go wrong? Well, that's what in this video, we're gonna talk about what can go wrong and the ramifications that it has for you, the investor. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Johnny Walker, AKA Dr. Jonathan Withanachi. I am a veteran and an artist of over 15 years. Investing in real estate has allowed me to take a giant step back from my clinical practice, spend enormous amounts of time with my friends and family, travel the world five to seven vacations per year, and allows me to have the time to do things that I'm passionate about and make my life worth living. Two of those things are that I've dedicated my career towards is educating my fellow doctors on how they too can achieve financial freedoms through passive investment. All right, guys, before we get into today's video topic, I gotta let you know, you gotta get your ticket. Yes, that's right. We we are having an in-person meeting on August 16th, 2024 in Dallas, Texas. We have only 18 seats left as of the time of this recording. So if you want to network with the best of the best doctors, the brightest doctors, top real estate entrepreneurs, meet me, network, get access, and have an overall great time as well as get an education, get your ticket today. The link is in the description below. All right, let's get into today's video. What can go wrong with a passive investment? So the first thing that we need to do is look at the four main areas of risk in a passive investment. Next, we will talk about what happens to the dentist investor when one of these risks goes wrong. Number one, market risk. Real estate markets can be unpredictable and subject to various economic factors such as interest rates, supply and demand dynamics, as well as government regulations. A downturn in the market can lead to reduced demand for apartment units, lower rental income, and potentially even increasing vacancies. And all of this has impact on the return to investors. Number two is debt risk. This is probably the largest source of volatility and distress and risk in any deal is the debt. What kind of debt do you have? Is it variable rate? Is it fixed rate? Is it bridge loan financing? Is it agency financing and why did you choose that debt product and is it congruent with the business plan of the deal itself balancing that debt risk is important number three is the liquidity risk real estate investments probably the biggest disadvantage of real estate some people would say it's an advantage in some ways is that real estate investments are highly illiquid meaning that it is very challenging to quickly sell a property if you have an immediate need for cash. That's why it is essential for a dentist that's investing in these type of investments to really have an understanding and a reasonable expectation of how long their money may actually be tied up in this property because it may be tied up for many for multiple years. So you have to be know this and be comfortable with this as well as planning. Financial planning should also be cognizant of the timeline of these investments. Number four, legal and regulatory risks. Real estate syndication are subject to SEC, tax laws that are always changing, very complex, a lot of gray areas, room for uh, interpretation. Now, non-compliance with these regulations can lead to legal liabilities, can lead to fines, or even potentially the dissolution of the partnership. That's why it is essential to get proper legal counsel that has an excellent understanding of syndication investments and their structures. Number five is the sponsor risk and lack of control. The success of any of these passive investment hinges primarily on the ability of the sponsor or the general partner, the guys that's gonna actually be doing the investment. If that sponsor lacks experience, makes poor investment decisions, or engages in unethical practices, it can jeopardize the performance of the investment and this can potentially lead to losses to the investors. Conducting thorough due diligence about the sponsor, the sponsor's track record, and working with reputable sponsors greatly reduces the risk on this part of the investment. Now, what are the what are what can go wrong in a passive investment? If some of these things that we're talking about, if they break down, what can happen? And what is the ramification for investors? Well, one of the things that can happen is a pause of distributions. This can happen for a multitude of reasons. We've had deals that have a positive distribution. Now, what are the positive distributions? Well, let's say, hey, look, in an investment, the investment's going really well. We're paying off all our expenses. We're paying our mortgage payments. And we still have enough cash left over that we can make a form of distribution to the investors as cash flow. Hey, the deal's doing well. Every month, investors get used to getting an income check. Income check every month, the cash flow is coming in from the investment. They're like, hey, this is great. And then all of a sudden, they stop. Positive distributions. They say, hey, look, things are, Operationally, not as sound as we thought. There was more people moving out than there was people moving in. We're in the process of evicting tenants. 
and because of that the non-paying tenants because of that the income is low and so a lot of times it a good operator then this might actually be a reasonable thing the sponsor says hey we're gonna be fiscally responsible and we know there's some uncertainty coming and because of that we want to stack up some cash in reserves instead of just giving it all out as distributions we want to stack up some cash so that if push comes to shove we have a reserve that we can draw from now investors don't like it when there's a, a, a pause in distributions because they get used to getting the income some people may even depend on the income but it's bittersweet because they might be actually doing the right thing to try to save this deal is it more important for you to get your check every month but there's a higher chance that, hey, things might go wrong and we get cash trapped and we need to sell at a loss or worse, we might foreclose. Or would you rather that, hey, we're going to stop the distributions, right? So positive distributions is annoying. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it's a red flag that, hey, look, something's going awry with this property. We need to go in and take a deeper dive into what's going on with this company and, and due diligence. Number two is capital calls. Capital call in a, in a passive investment or a syndicated investment is when the sponsor or the operators asked investors to give additional investment capital in order to meet some unexpected financial obligations that without the money would prevent them from going and executing the business plan and getting the deal done. So all of a sudden you need more capital. That's called a capital call. We actually have a whole video on capital call. We had a whole video on what is a capital call and how to deal with them. If you've ever had a capital call or feel like you're about to face one with one of the deal, you definitely want to watch that video. And if we can drop a link for that video, what is a capital call, please drop it here. So I'm not going to go too much into capital calls. That's um, and again, this can happen with any deal where it could be due to debt, it could be due to operations, unexpected expense, something that the sponsor needs more money in order to keep the deal going. And then they come and ask an investor for that. So that's called the capital call. Number three is loss of principal. Now, while real estate investments can offer very attractive returns at well mitigated risk, there is still chance that you can lose money, right? Re investment, some uh, the, this, the law of nature, law of probability and statistics is that some investments aren't going to work out. Now, loss of principal could happen in a couple of ways. One is, hey, the property just forecloses. Lender can't make, lender forecloses on the property because the, the sponsor, the owner stops making payments, the mortgage payments, and they say, hey, we're going to take the property back from you. In that case, you could assume that your capital is going to be lost. There is a chance you may get back a percentage of your money because now what the bank is going to do, they're going to take it and they're going to make sure that they can sell the property at a good enough price that they're going to recoup their loan and their expenses. Now, if there's any additional money that they get, potentially that could flow to investors as limited partners. So you may get some of your invested capital back, likely not, likely not all of it. And this may take years before you actually get it in the, in the case of a foreclosure, a nightmare all around. Another way that you can have a loss of principal is if a deal has a large segment in the capital stack called preferred equity. Now, pref equity, or which is what it's colloquially called in the industry, pref equity has a higher priority in the capital stack than common equity. Now, preferred equity means that they get paid first. Profits, first the lender gets paid, and the first profits coming out of the deal after the lender goes directly to preferred equity. Now, if a deal goes south and we sell the, we sell the property for a marginal profit, now the debt gets paid, right? The money will go to the lender, they get paid back whatever's loaded on the mortgage, and then that profit, because there's not enough to go around, the first amount of profit is gonna go to the preferred equity class, and, the, well, I guess you don't lose your principal there, you just don't get any return, right? So there's potential. So I guess that one's not, not that was not a good example. But it is, it is something to be, I'm gonna leave that in, I'm not gonna get the editor to take this part out, because pref equity is something that we always have to consider that increases our risk if there's pref equity ahead of us on the capital stack. So it's something to keep in mind. So those are the three real main ramifications for investors, positive distributions, capital call, and then just loss of your money altogether. Obviously you could get sued, but as a limited partner, you have almost no, you have zero involvement with the day-to-day -day operations. So you're protected by just the nature of the invest, your investment uh, share, right? As a limited partner you don't have any direct dealings with the day-to-day. -day, and as a result, you have no liability in, in that sense. So that's it for today. Hope you guys got a ton of value. If you did, smash the like button. Please share with your uh, like-minded colleagues. Click on the next video to keep the information flowing and your bank accounts growing. I'm Dr. Johnny Walker. I'll see you on the next video. Boom!